but welcome back to Loaded Landscapes. My name's Simon Plant. Today we're going to use a neat little trick to remove distractions from our images using the paintbrush tool. Now there's lots of wonderful tools in Photoshop for uh, cloning and uh, content aware uh, if you need to remove objects uh, from your images. But sometimes those don't always work very well and especially if you've got an object and you haven't got a lot of data to clone over that object. Now in this image, this is shot in Madrid in Spain several years ago, um, I've got this poster on the this window here I'm not sure what it says it could be something obscene who knows but let's say we need to remove it now we could probably with this image just about get away with you know selecting some of the window here and cloning over um, but I did a job just recently um, in London um, when I was photographing uh, about a dozen models and I this is a, 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 a technique that I had to use on some of the pictures because there just wasn't enough information for me to successfully clone or fill use content where to fill in the missing data and uh, this is where this technique it comes into its own so I'm going to start off by adding a new layer above our background image and we can zoom in a little bit if we need to and then I'm going to get a paintbrush tool from the uh, from the tool bar here and we're going to simply I'm going to get my pressure sensitive pen for this uh, but you can do something similar with a mouse although it's a little bit trickier in my opinion um, so I'm going to uh, set a, a low flow to around 8 to 10%. We'll just set it at 10%. And we're not going to try and do this all in one go, but we're going to slowly build up the image. And the way we do this is so we've got our brush tool, we're going to alter option click on the image. And what that's going to do is get a sample of the color from the image. So if I click on this uh, poster here, you'll see in the, uh, in the swatches here, that's picked out the color of that poster. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to start off by picking the colour below here. Now, it doesn't have to be super accurate. We're just going to start off by uh, going over this image very roughly. I'm going to keep my brush nice and soft for this image. And I'm going to slowly just paint over the approximate area, like so. Now, the key to this is to keep sampling different colours so it's not one uniform block of colour. And what we're going to do in a little while is once we've done a, a rough uh, going over this image, we're then going to sort of fine tune it. So I'm not going to be too uh, precise at this stage. I'm just going to keep building it up and just remember to keep sampling from a nearby bit of area. Very much like cloning. As I said, we don't need to be too precise on this. I'm just going to get it roughly where I need it. So what I'm going to do is carry on with this because you don't need to be sat here watching me paint all this in. And we'll come back once I've completed the first stage. But as I said, all you need to worry about this stage is very, very roughly going over the areas you need to paint. So as you can see, I've very roughly gone over the areas that I need. Now, bear in mind, I haven't taken all these uh, distractions out because I don't want a, a completely black window. Uh, I want to try and keep in some reflections. Um, so I'm going to call this one uh, Paint 1. I'm going to add another layer on top of that. And this is where we start to sort of use a bit more care. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. We want to go over the image again, but this time we want to sort of add a bit more shape uh, to the picture. So I'm going to make my paintbrush a little bit smaller and a little bit harder. And now I've still got my, uh, my uh, flow down to around 10%. Now I'm going to start to build the image up with a bit more sharpness to it. So all we're doing is just adding a little bit of form back into this so it doesn't look like we've just painted directly over the image. I'm just going to come in a little bit. I want to try and get, if I can, a bit of this area here and try and continue that line. Now, if you're having difficulty with that, just pick out a darker colour and just use a bit of artistic licence and just paint those in like so. No one's going to know there and even extend that across 
and same in this area here I might even have to come in use a bit of this color so it literally is we are just painting I'm going to extend that over a little bit cover that up and you basically carry on with the image like this I need to make sure that this this area here is a little bit sharper so again going to make my brush much harder and I might even actually come in and grab a colour a little bit darker colour darker grey there like so so there we go that's better so I'm recreating and maybe using a bit of artistic license to add these reflections into the window back in and then just zoom out a little bit once we've finished so this is a hundred percent it's not looking too bad at all so a couple of things we need to do just to make this fit in and make it look realistic first of all I'm going to rename this one uh, details I'm going to make sure that I lock all these layers together if you don't want them to go and walk about um, I think what I'm going to do then is turn off the background layer. I'm going to add a new layer on top and we're going to do a stamp visible, which is combining both these layers into one. And you'll see why in a second. So I made a new layer on top of those. I've turned the background layer off. I don't want this one to uh, be stamped into this new layer. I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key. Then from up here, I'm going to go down to merge visible. Now, uh, by holding down the Alt or Option key, it's not going to flatten the image, it's just going to make a new layer. Otherwise, it will flatten everything into a new layer, and we don't want that. So, this is my uh, stamp painting. Okay, we can turn the background layer back on. So, now we've got, rather than having it on three layers, we've now got everything on one layer. I'm going to right click on this layer and convert this to a smart object. And what we're going to do is going to add some noise back in. Whenever you do a lot of retouching, uh, regardless, and maybe a bit of compositing and stuff, it's generally you end up uh, putting a bit of noise back on top of the image. And this just helps bind everything together. And it's the same with painting. We're painting with flat colour here, which has no real texture. And we need to put a bit of texture back into this to make it blend in with the, the rest of the image and then maybe the noise that's already in the rest of the image as well. So do that by creating a a, 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 um, a smart object sorry so that we can obviously go back in and out if we need to you don't need to make a smart object but I do filter noise add noise now we don't need a lot of noise in this uh, but we do need some and normally uh, maybe anywhere up to a pixel is enough now we're looking at trying to look at this part of the image here and I think that's too much. I don't know if you can see that in here. So we're just going to drop this down a little bit. It looks about right. And I reckon about 0.8 on this one looks good. Okay, so let's just make sure that's on 100%. And uh, you can see the, the grain quite clearly that we've added in. Now the problem I've got here is um, it's too much. And you also got to watch these lines here that where the transition is because we've uh, haven't painted over the whole of this window. And at the moment we've got quite a lot of grain where we've painted and then it goes into very little grain. So let's go back in. Because I've made a smart object, we can just click on the, uh, the noise button here and go back in so I'm going to drop this down I think quite a bit and that's looking better okay that's good 0.3 was so we've come down quite a bit so that's a good idea to have um, have the smart object you can go back in and, and, and readjust it so probably a little bit more fine-tuning need on this but that gives you a very sound base to show you how you can quickly uh, remove distractions without having to use a clone stamp tool and I don't think you would look at that um, immediately and think there's anything untoward going on you just have to remember to just build up the image slowly use a low opacity and just slowly build it up and then obviously add a little bit of detail back in there now obviously you know the uh, clone stamp tool 
is a great tool and you'll probably that should be your first choice but as I said with some images you might not have enough information to clone from uh, and clone over the object you're trying to remove so this is where this technique um, is a, a godsend really and it saved me quite a few times and um, in fact in some circumstances I prefer it to using the clone stamp tool um, but uh, it just takes a bit of practice so anyway I hope you enjoyed this uh, short video and I hope to catch you on the next one. Cheers for watching.